All right, the gunman in the shooting at a Colorado Springs gay nightclub that killed five and injured 17 is under police custody and could face potential hate crime charges. While some of the surviving victims of the attack continue to recover from their injuries, according to reports, the suspect, 22-year-old Anderson Lee Aldrich, was arrested in June 2021 after threatening to blow up a home where his mother lived at the time with a bomb. Those charges, though, were eventually dropped. Records also showed he had a tumultuous childhood and changed his name at age 15 after being bullied online. Joining us now to discuss the latest in the case, former FBI agent and retired Navy SEAL Jonathan Gillum and retired NYPD detective first grade and law enforcement analyst Harry Huck. Harry, I want to start with you. The suspect in the shooting was arrested last year in connection with a bomb threat, which led to a standoff with the police at his mom's house. The charges were dropped and the records were sealed, uh, though the reason is somewhat unclear. And so I guess the question is, that seems pretty serious. And yet the guy gets let off. The prosecutors didn't seem to move. And, and here we are a year later going, hey, uh, weren't the signs there that this guy was a problem? Well, was this another woke alleged prosecution? I mean, if, if you uh, had the police standing off trying to get into your home and trying to negotiate for you to uh, surrender, I mean, we got a major crime being committed here, and this guy should have been charged. Now, we probably would not have had this shooting if those police officers or the district attorney's office prosecuted this case the way it should be, because this guy should be in jail. I agree. Jonathan, I mean, Colorado's got red flag laws, and, and this guy Aldrich's his arrest in 2021 would have led to legal action that prevented him from obtaining a weapon, right? So this is how the system's supposed to work. But because the charges were dropped, his record did not show up on a background check. This is what the left is always talking about. But the system dropped the ball on this guy, didn't it? They did, and, and here's the fact is it doesn't matter how many red flag laws you have or how stiff the laws are. If you do have prosecutors who don't enforce these laws, then right. that's how you get into this situation. And then what ends up happening is they end up asking, the politicians end up asking for more laws and stricter laws. So it, it is a pendulum that swings and unfortunately does not come back uh, typically in these areas. So uh, if they had just followed the law as it's written in most places without even red flag laws, these quote unquote red flag laws, what you would have seen is that this individual would have been put in jail for a felony and he would never have had a gun again. It, it seems so. Harry, this is this is the thing that I think is so interesting. The left keeps talking about taking away guns. And yet over and over again, we see signs where somebody did or said something that should have not allowed them to have a gun in the first place. And I, I just don't understand it because the law actually works. People who shouldn't have guns exhibit signs. It's law-abiding citizens don't actually go out and do bad things. And yet, I, I don't get this. They don't prosecute people. They want to let all these people off. They go soft on crime. They don't allow laws to actually work the way they're supposed to. And we end up with the, you know, exact tragedies like this. Yeah, I've been looking at this for the last 40 years, for crying out loud. The fact is that Democrats do not want to prosecute anybody that carries a gun, an unlawful gun, or commits a crime with a gun. They do not want to prosecute them, but they're so intense on taking the guns away from you and me, legitimate people who might act in the event the police aren't around to be able to help somebody. But these bad guys, all right, they can go out there, they can carry any gun they want, you know, and, and I saw it when I was a New York City cop, forget about it. There used to be this joke about how you could, you have to spend a year in jail if you got caught with a gun. I never saw anybody go to jail for a year when they were caught with an illegal gun. And as long as they don't want to prosecute those guys, but they want to prosecute us for being lawful, that's just pure insanity, and I still don't understand it to this day. Right. You know, Jonathan, you're a former Navy SEAL. The guy in the case who, who tackled this guy, who went after him as he was shooting in the club, was an Army veteran, clearly didn't have the level of training that you did. Um, he had served three tours in Iraq, one in Afghanistan. He was at the club to watch, uh, apparently, his daughter's friend was in one of the shows. He, he was there to disarm the shooter. As I said, you're a former Navy SEAL. I mean, you've got serious training. This guy, and again, I don't want to by any means uh, undermine the level of training this guy has, but I don't, by anything I've read, seem to think that it's at the level of a SEAL. Um, right. 
the, the question I thought was interesting is, I, I mean, this guy's a friggin' hero, right? He goes out there, he says, I'm gonna take this guy down. Because, I think the quote was something like, I was gonna kill him before he killed me or any of these other people. Do you think that that, that kind of training, the basic training that, that anyone in the military gets, uh, gives them the what they need to go after uh, someone in a situation like this? Or, or and what should a bystander do in a situation like this? So in my book, Sheep No More, The Art of Awareness and Attack Survival, this is what I talk about. Awareness is so key because what the, the main thing that they teach you in military training is uh, to have the mindset uh, that you're going to act when action is needed. And the best way to prepare yourself is to forward think these things and make a commitment to take an action long before you ever get yourself in that type of a situation. And I'll tell you what's interesting about this, Sean, and Harry can back me up on this. What you saw from that individual was a mindset, and it's the mindset that was not shown and has not been shown in many law enforcement agencies, uh, such as Uvalde, such as happened in Florida when they had the nightclub shooting there. You have officers who do not have this mindset and refuse to push forward uh, when there is a situation that could get them killed. Um, strictly because they have decided that long before that point, that they will take action when action is needed. And that's what you saw here. Exactly. And i got to say it again. I mean, that guy, you're absolutely right. When you see a situation like that, you know, so many active shooter situations, they tell you to take cover. This guy's a hero because he, he saved so many lives by acting the way that he did, putting his life in danger. And I can't underscore that. But, Harry, I do want to ask you one thing in the final 30 seconds that I have. The shooter may face potential hate charges. And I know the media is jumping all over this because the shooting happened at an LBGTQ club. The suspect, as far as I know, has yet to make any statements about potential motive. Um, they've yet to uncover anything in his background. But White House Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre herself, who is gay, felt compelled to make the following statement today. Let me play it for you. This attack also comes amidst a rise in violent rhetoric and threats against the LGBTQI plus people across the country. While we don't know yet for certain the motive of this attack, hate has no place in this country and neither do military-style assault rifles, which is why we will continue to push for an assault weapons ban. So I, I, don't, I don't disagree with the, her conclusion about hate, but she's jumping to, seems to be jumping to a conclusion about the motive and the, and the type of weapon, as far as I know. Tell me if I'm wrong in either of those. Yeah, you're right. I mean, they're using this as a political point, talking point for themselves. And the fact is, we don't know why that guy went in and shot. He didn't speak to anybody yet. He, you know, unless he came in there and started shooting, was yelling all kinds of anti-gay remarks. We don't know what happened there. Maybe he knew somebody inside the place. And uh, maybe he was a former employee and wanted to shoot the place up because he had some kind of dispute with somebody. Where We don't know. We have to wait and see exactly what occurred here and what his motive was before we start talking. But as you always know, you know, the left starts talking right away because they can use it as a talking point. Exactly. They John, this, tell the right this hate, wait till we know all the facts. That the hate that they spew, that? that they say, the hate that they say is being spewed constantly is another uh, example of the rhetoric they use, just like the gun issue. They say that this hate is being spewed and it's a constant violent issue. I, I challenge anyone, go in the news and find me these violent attacks that are happening against that community on a constant basis. It's not occurring. Yeah. Interesting. Jonathan, Harry, thank you both very much. I hope you have a happy Thanksgiving. If I don't see you. Me too. You too. Thanks thank for having you. us.